Hi everyone, this is Mix from Six and Ball PH, and today we have a detailed review on the Jordan Zion 1. Before we get started, if you like the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Then if you have any comments, questions, or any suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below as well. Then I'll also be leaving a link to the SNB page Sneaker Hunters Facebook group down in the description box. So I do hope that you can join because we do talk about sneakers and basketball quite a bit over there. And that's also where I hold my monthly giveaways. Then if you haven't already yet, please make sure to sub to the channel because it really does help us out quite a lot. Then with that out of the way, it's time to take a look at the Jordan Zion 1 Gen Zion. It always is really exciting when we get a brand new signature shoe line and given that this is a Jordan brand signature shoe it just makes it even more special because we don't really have a lot of them I mean you do have Westbrook who's already on his fourth signature shoe the why not 04 and I'm not really sure about CP3 because I really did love Chris Paul's signature shoes before it's just that they've kind of died down in popularity and here in the Philippines we don't even get his signature shoes anymore so with Jordan brand signature shoes at least here in the Philippines you just have Westbrook's you have the main Jordan signature shoes like the Jordan 35 and this brand new Jordan Zion 1. Jordan Brand did sign quite a few promising young stars like Jason Tatum, Luka Doncic, and of course Zion Williamson. A lot of people did wonder though why Zion was the first one to get the signature shoe and not Luka Doncic, but in my own personal opinion, even though Luka's the better player because Luka is a perennial MVP candidate, Zion might be a little bit more marketable because he is such a freak of nature, and we get jaw dropping highlights from him every single game. But now that Zion already has his signature shoe, I think it won't be long before Luka gets his as well. Then going back to the Zion 1 when it was unveiled they actually had four upcoming colorways and this is the launch colorway which they're calling the Gen Zion. That is a play on the term Gen Z because apparently Zion is the first Gen Z NBA player to get his own signature shoe. So they incorporated it with the name and with the shoe as well so that's pretty witty all things considered. Then for the other colorways you have this pretty cool blue ZNA colorway and in a video that Jordan Brand released Zion explained that that colorway was kind of inspired by him being an alien which is technically true because we really never seen any Anything like Zion because you know he isn't that tall but he is definitely super strong and super explosive as well while weighing close to 300 pounds. That colorway is set to release on May 5 and then on May 19th you have the Noah colorway and this was supposedly based off of Doodles from his younger brother. Then lastly on May 26 you have the Marion colorway which is a nod to his hometown of South Carolina. And actually with all of the colorways I think all four look pretty good. So with Zion's first ever signature shoe I do think they did a good job plus you know they were also able to get the price down but to see if it's worth that price let's take a look at the tech specs so for the tech specs on the zion one here on the outsole you do have mostly translucent rubber except for some solid rubber here at the medial side of the forefoot the traction pattern that they used is pretty interesting because it looks like a lot of jagged ripples but it does seem like it's gonna work pretty similar to herringbone and just trying it out here at home it is really grippy however i did also notice that it seemed to pick up dust a little fast but i do hope that even though it picks up dust quite fast that it won't affect the performance that much but of course we'll just have to wait and see after i get these on court. Then for that solid rubber near the ball of your foot, it actually has the same pattern. And I'm not really sure why they put solid rubber on this portion, maybe it's to provide a little more grip at the ball of your foot. But within that solid white rubber, you also have that pivot point, and I do really like that they included that on the shoe. Then moving on to the cushion, you do have a full length file on midsole, which is a little bit on the softer side, a zoom unit here in the forefoot, and a full length air strobe unit. The setup is pretty similar to what we got on the PG4 and PG5, which were definitely very comfortable cushion setups, but they did decide to add an extra zoom unit here in the forefoot. It is a pretty small rectangular zoom unit in the forefoot so I'm not sure how much of a difference that actually makes when you're playing but as of now if you were to ask me if I felt the effect of that zoom unit I would say no but that doesn't mean that I don't find the cushion great because I do feel like it's amazing because that air strobe is right underneath your foot and you know air is not as responsive as zoom but in my opinion it is a lot more plush so you do get a lot more comfort and it absorbs a lot of impact as well. It also helps that that phylon is on the softer side because 
really does compress quite a bit. So overall the cushion is a really good one because it is nice and stable, you do have a lot of comfort and you have a lot of impact protection as well. It doesn't feel as close to the ground as like a Kyrie or the Cosmic Unities but it also isn't like a LeBron where you feel like this overabundance of cushion. It is kind of just in the middle which in my opinion makes it a very versatile and comfortable cushion setup. Then for the material, sadly for the second video in a row because we just reviewed the KD13s, the materials are kind of what I don't enjoy on the shoe because they kind of really did penny pinch on this one. So for the Zion one on the upper, you do have a lot of screen mesh, you have some ripstop, and you have a lot of synthetic materials and fuse. That screen mesh is on the black portion here at the forefoot and it is really plasticky as well so yep. And then here on the midfoot panels of the lateral and medial side you also have ripstop and that doesn't sound or feel that premium so that's that and you do have a lot of synthetic materials so you have synthetic materials here at the heel you have fuse over the stitching you have fuse here at the eye stays you have fuse here at the lateral and medial side of the toe then rounding out the rest of the materials you do have nylon straps here at the bottom two eyelets a nylon pull tab here at the back a well padded and sculpted neoprene sock liner and this very strange feeling tongue that's this weird feeling synthetic on the top it has a little bit of padding in strategic areas it has a little bit of screen mesh underneath and it has this very felt feeling material that's super thin as well here at the top of the tongue. Overall the materials on the shoe don't feel premium at all, they feel pretty plasticky and there is so much fuse that you know I kind of forgot it was 2021. But on a positive note they did put some of that fuse in strategic areas where you also had the stitching so I guess that'll help with the durability and also the synthetic here at the middle side of the toe as well as the heel does feel a little better than most of the other materials on the shoe and that neoprene sock liner is just super comfy so at least for that there are some positives. Then for fit and sizing I did go to the size with the Jordan Zion 1 and it fits me perfectly well. There really isn't much extra space throughout the shoe and the back is just super padded and sculpted so it feels really comfy but if I did have a minor nitpick with the fit it's just that you know when you lace it to the top eyelet the laces do run pretty short so you have this like teeny weeny knot and given that the laces were pretty short you know you could have made the case that I could have just tied it until the second to the last eyelet but it just didn't give me the same locked in feel as I would have had if I laced it up all the way. So for my recommendation on the sizing of the shoe if you have an arrow foot or a normal with foot definitely go through to size then if you were a wide footer there really isn't a lot of wiggle room on the shoe so i would suggest you go up half a size then for the aesthetic details this gen zion colorway is one of the simpler ones but they still do have quite a few interesting details so here on the outsole you do have that bluish translucent rubber a little bit of solid white and that black pivot point with the jordan jumpman then here on the midfoot you do have exposed pylon and you have an embossed zion logo then moving on to the midsole that pylon is all white you also have this thin black line that actually connects to the upper giving you this thing that looks like a Z. I did find that a pretty cool way to incorporate the Z into the shoe and it does look really cool especially when you see it from afar. Then on the upper it is predominantly black and white so you do have white from the midfoot back so that includes the ripstop as well as all of that fuse and then here at the forefoot you have black screen mesh and black fuse as well. Then you also have black on the tongue and the laces but you do have a gold jump man here at the base of the lacing as well as a gold Zion Williamson logo here on the top of the tongue. Then on the sock liner it actually does kind of spill over on the upper of the shoe quite a bit and it has this really cool graphic that says Zion and it looks like it's been kind of written on there with a marker and it's definitely the feature that stands out the most given that this is a pretty basic black and white colorway. Then for the other tidbits on the shoe you do have a gold Zion logo here at the heel tab. Then here on the rubber that comes up on the middle side of the midsole you have shock the world and let's dance and I think these were inspired by a few tweets that he had in high school. And then on the outsole it is kind of hard to see in this colorway but you have Sharonda, Coach, Noah and Tyreek which are members of his family. Then you have Spartanburg, Jonokin, Flowtown, and Durham which are places that mean a lot to him and he did explain this on the video released by Jordan Brand because Flowtown is where he kind of grew up, Jonokin is where he went to middle school, Spartanburg is where he went to high school and that's pretty much where we got all of the Zion highlights that really drove up the hype. And then we have Durham, North Carolina where Zion went to college. Then for the overall aesthetics, I wasn't really feeling the shoe when I saw the initial leaks on like Instagram but when I saw it on site it did look pretty nice and now that I have them in hand, I think they did a really good job designing the shoe. Definitely isn't the loudest shoe because you know you have his Jordan brand teammate Russell Westbrook for that but it just looks nice and strong and powerful like how Zion is. And I do really like that Z that comes from the upper to the midsole because I do think that's a really cool way to incorporate like a Zion theme without making it too loud or in your face. And just for my own personal preferences, this is kind of like how I expect a modern basketball shoe to look like. Then for the price, the Zion 1 retails for 6,445 pesos here in the Philippines or 120 US dollars. It is definitely a competitive 
competitive price point because at this price you're kind of competing with the PG5, Kairi 7, the Dame 7, the Why Not Zero 4 and I think it stacks up pretty well against all of those shoes. The only downside to the shoe are the materials because I do think that they are super plasticky. Because that cushion is really comfy then the traction seems like it will work well and it also seems like it's pretty durable as well. I did get my pair over at Nike.com and I do think all of the sizes are still available. So if you want a pair or you're waiting for some of the other upcoming colorways, you can definitely head over to their site and they do ship pretty fast because I did get these in after a couple of days. So there you have it guys, that was my detailed review on the Jordan Zion 1. Once again, if you haven't already yet, please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. It would help us out a lot here at Sneaks and Ball, PH.